This screen cast is to help you with Module 2, Lesson 19, Homework. We're going to move from estimating quotients, and we're actually going to divide two and three digit dividends by multiples of ten with single digit quotients. Today we're going to start some actual simple division problems. And we're going to lay out a procedure here. First, we're going to estimate. Then we're going to solve. And then we're going to check. Let's start by estimating. Well, we really don't have to round our divisor today because it's already rounded for us. So we're, we're just going to work with 30, and, and that's a way to keep things a little simpler for us. And if I am going to round the or keep my dividend at 30, what am I going to work with for my divisor? Uh, well, 80 is closest to 90. Okay, so 90 divided by 30 is 3. All right, let's set up our problem here. We are going to put our dividend, 80, under the tableau, and our divisor outside. Now, in order to do this, we need to use our estimate. We're going to say that there are three groups of 30. And 3 times 30 is 90. Oh, oh, we have a problem here. 90 is greater than the 80. So that's not going to work. So our estimate this time was incorrect. We multiplied. We got a number greater than that 80 that we're working with here in the dividend. So when that happens, we're going to have to uh, adjust our estimate. So we're going to now try a smaller number, and we'll try 2. And if we think about our flexible rounding here, we could have rounded this down to 60 as well, because 80 is between 60 and 90. And that's kind of the reason we're starting to talk about a little more flexibility in our thinking. So that would be 60. Let's see what happens there. So I put 2 in my quotient and you'll notice that it goes over the zero because I am talking about uh, two thirties alright so two times thirty is sixty I subtract and I get twenty now it's really important that you look at the number you get after you subtract that difference that difference must be less than the divisor indeed twenty is less than thirty I call that the mini check, always a good idea. Now we're going to check the problem. And one way of doing that is kind of make a number bond over here, and we could say that 80 is two, two groups of 30, and really we should erase that, because the two groups of 30 is actually... 60. And then we take our remainder, which I didn't put up over here, so I should have a remainder of 20. And I'll put that over here. When I find the sum of these two numbers in my number bond here, this being uh, representing two groups of 30, which is 60, so that's my quotient, and this is my remainder. When I add those two, I get 80. Now, to do that more formally, we're going to take our quotient portion and multiply it times our divisor. So I have 2 times 30 equals 60. I'm going to take my product and add the, uh, the uh, remainder, which is 20, and I get 80. So it, when I check my work, after I add, multiply and add, it should match my dividend, and indeed it does. Let's do another example. Okay, we have 71 divided by 50. Again, the divisor is already uh, taken care of for us. Uh, it's it's a multiple of 10. So we're going to have to think of what are we going to do to that uh, dividend to make it uh, easily uh, divisible by 50. Uh, I could think of 50...
and then the next multiple is 100. And I see that 70 is closest to 50, isn't it? So we have an estimate of 50 divided by 50. And that equals 1. So let's set up our problem. I am now going to put my dividend under the tableau. Put my divisor outside. I'll use my estimate and put 1 in my quotient. 1 times 50 is 50, so I have 150 in 71. Now I'm going to find the difference, and I get 21. As I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that our difference when we're done subtracting in a division problem must be less than the divisor. Indeed, 21 is less than 50, so we're going to now put our remainder in. So it's 1 with a remainder of 21. So uh, to use the model here, we will put 71 and then we're going to put in one group of 50 and that is 50. In this other number bond we'll put the 21. And we find the sum of 50 and 21 is 71. Again, more formally, 1 times 50 equals 50. Take my product, add my remainder. 50 plus 21 is 71. And again, my uh, answer there matches my dividend. One more example. This one's really easy because we don't even have to do any rounding here. Uh, just to let you know that sometimes we don't have remainders. So we can see that 3 goes evenly into 27. So we really don't even have to round here. So we'll set up our problem and putting our dividend under the tableau. How many times does 30 go into 270? Well, we know that 3 times 9 is 27. So 30 or 3 tenths times 9 is 27 tenths or 270. So we're going to put our 9 in our quotient, and we already know that 30 times 9 is 270. We subtract, we get 0. We have no remainder. We don't have to put that remainder of 0. Some kids like to do that. I'm not going to bother. Well, that's a distractor. Again, in this case, it's, it's really simple. Uh, all we have to do is, I'm not going to use the number bond this time, all I have to do is multiply my quotient times my divisor and I get 270. I don't add anything because I don't have a remainder. We can see in this case that once again they match. Let's look at a word problem from the practice set and then we're going to discuss a word problem from the homework. Okay, this one is interesting. A number divided by 80 has a quotient of 7 with 4 as a remainder. Find the number. All right, we have some number. We don't know what it is. All right, but we know it's divided by 80. And we get a 7 with a remainder of 4. Let's think about our number bond here. We don't know this number here. But we do know we have 7 groups of 80. We have to figure out what goes in there. We have a remainder of 4. We can put a 4 right there. 7 groups of 80. Well, 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 8 tens is 56 tens, which is 560. And now all we have to do is find the sum of this 560, which represents 7 groups of 80, and 4. So our answer is 564. So the number is 564. Well, the last problem here we're looking at is from our homework. I'm not going to give you the answer, but let's read this problem from our homework. I'm not solving it for you again, but we're going to look at it. A shipment 
of 288 textbooks has been delivered. Each of the 10 classrooms will receive an equal share of the books, with any extra books being stored in the book room. After the texts have been distributed to the classrooms, how many will be stored in the book room? This is an example of a problem where the answer is not the quotient with the remainder. The answer is going to be a part of this quotient. And what, well, let's just look a little more carefully. First of all, we're going to want a problem with the remainder. So we, uh, we could use our place value understanding to solve this by simply uh, moving each digit to another place. But you're better off using the tableau this time. That tableau will give you a remainder. The remainder will be the extras. I think from there you should be able to figure out how to solve this problem from your homework.